Hello everyone and welcome to this uh, homebrew channel tutorial or explanation. Uh, I've already made a video on how to install the homebrew channel onto your Wii U. And if you have watched that then this is the benefits of what hacking your Wii U can do. And uh, this probably will help you decide whether you want to do it or not. I've had a few comments just regarding uh, configurable loaders and USB loaders and things. Now this works the same way as it did on your original Wii except uh, the the Wii U's power source from the back of the USB ports is slightly less, so you might need to uh, drag uh, the other USB into this with a Y cable to, to power your um, hard drive sufficiently. So this is basically just a, a USB game loader, and uh, any games that you have on your hard drive, it'll download the covers. Not automatically, you do have to set it to, uh, to download them with uh, the updates here. Download uh, all missing covers, and uh, all covers, you know, so... Uh, it's got a big database online for some clever people that have set up a little server for them and uh, basically you just click a game and you can just play it. And uh, you know, any size game, so Smash Brothers is a really big game where Wii Sports isn't a very big game. And uh, the covers actually have 3D effects as well if you want them to, so that's a really nice touch. You can see the disc, if, if you've never seen the disc before of a game then uh, just download it and put it in here. Like I'd never know about Tiger Woods PGA Tour disc because I don't play that. But yeah, uh, from there you can choose which iOS it loads with and stuff. Uh, but you are very limited on the Wii U because you can only install 249, 250 and 251. Uh, because the others, um, well I don't know, it's not the same as the Wii so you can only on the Wii U install certain ones. Uh, this is just a filter of what time of get type of games so there's a database somewhere on your SD card that tells this uh, application that these are the these are the types of games that there are and uh, it also says like it'll say that Sam and Max is a uh, detective sort of game what sort of game would that come under a puzzle game or something like that yeah so if you press puzzle that'd come up and you can sort them by any means that you want change the display to this but I don't really like that one and don't like any others to be honest there uh, I mean they do look good but I much prefer this one not this one where is it I can't get it back now there it is uh, yeah just because it you know you get two different angles of the cases and it just seems to flow nice uh, you can change the themes as well down here you see uh, glass glass red crazy GBA temp which is uh, the website that you learn all about this stuff on and now I'm not entirely sure how to get those settings back up uh, style okay we'll get this theme back up now wherever it is red glass open style there we go so that's back to normal again thank god for that uh, we pick any game just pick a game uh, at random bang uh, Fuck that because I'm not going to play that. Uh, in fact, I'm not going to play any of them, so Sonic and Sega All Stars Racing. Load it up, and whatever iOS you've chosen to load the game up with, that's it. It'll load the game using that iOS. The majority of the time they work, sometimes they won't work. If they worked on the Wii, they will work on the Wii U. Uh, not so sure about Rock Band games and the USB peripherals, though, because the iOS 222 and 223 by Hermes cannot be installed on the Wii U without causing uh, difficulties. So, yeah, that's it. It runs everything a bit faster than uh, than a disc because USBs load a bit faster than the disc drive can load games. So, you know, there's a bonus as well. Uh, just head back to the Wii menu now and back into the Homebrew channel because uh, it runs just like a normal game. So you have to exit to the Wii menu whenever you want to do something else. And uh, I'm just going to show you the Genesis emulator, or the Mega Drive emulator, or emulator, whatever you want to call them. And uh, you can see that people have actually put in the descriptions there who it's made by and which version it is and things, so you know whether you're up to date with them. And that's uh, decided by the meta file, or meta file, which is located in the, uh, in the apps folders. Uh, so, first things first on this, you load a game, uh, you can choose a directory just from scratch there and uh, mine's here so yep you scroll through I can't scroll through it there we go uh, scroll through the games and it's a really handy application you can do pretty much anything with it you can use cheat codes and uh, all sorts of things like that 
Usually there would be a picture in that cartridge on the right, but I haven't downloaded anything that allows me to see that, so... Games all run at full speed, and uh, even the saves work. These are saves that I've got, just like little example ones, obviously I've not started them, they're all zone 1, and this was just to prove that the saves do work, and you can also change characters, blah blah blah, so... You know, that's happy days. If we go back while we're during the game, and uh, press on this load and save, you can choose an empty slot, to save the game and uh, you can also set it as the default file so if you press load and then load it'll just load that file up uh, so I'll just give an example of that I'll save this as a save state uh, start oh no I've chosen tails I didn't mean to choose tails so that's a pain in the ass but if we go back and load the state there not save it load it then we get to you know fix our mistake that we just made there's also lots of video settings and system settings, so you know the console hardware you can change to any of the consoles that it emulates. Uh, the original Mega Drive, Mega Drive 2, Mega Drive 3, Game Gear, Super Master System, etc. So I don't know what the purpose of that is, but uh, you know it's region freed as well, so you can play any region's games, display it in progressive. All oh, right, that's okay. I didn't know about that, so. These are your uh, controller inputs, you click a player and you can obviously have up to four players and uh, choose your pad type, the Competition Pro or the regular Genesis controller and you can also choose your input device. But because I haven't got anything connected other than a, just a Wii remote on its own, uh, that won't show up any others. Sound, obvious, and uh, these are your auto loads and auto saves. So SRAM is the, uh, the type of memory the type of save that the game creates for you. So if you save the game within the game, uh, by going to a save menu or whatever within the game, then that creates an SRAM and that will automatically read it, just like Sonic did there. Uh, so yeah, that's that's it. You can use cheats as well. You can input the codes from here if you find them online. But I don't have any cheats for any of them, so... Uh, well, that's all there is to say about that one. Uh, you can hard reset it as well. if. For example, there is one game, I'm sure, where you get to the end of it and uh, you have to reset the game to commence, so that's that's just a shit thing to put in a game, but if you needed to do that, you could do that there. Back to the Homebrew channel, I'll just show you the SNES one as well, the Super Nintendo Ent Entertainment System, I can't find it, there it is. Uh, this is just another emulator that does basically the same things as the, uh, as the Genesis one with uh, a few more functions to be fair, so again you can search for this ROMS file wherever you put it, this ROMS folder. If we go into the settings you can see that loading and saving again, you can choose the folders where they save. So this is on the root of my SD card in saves and the, the loads are in the ROMS there and this, yeah so you can change that according to wherever your, your ROMS and saves you want. This one you can also use across the network but um, I don't have any computers connected to this, so unfortunately I can't show you that, but if you've got no ROMs on your SD card, you can load them over your network. Uh, yep, just a few more settings there, so I'm going to load a game now and just show you the uh, the uh, menus for the games in this. So, beautiful music, but that's a patched ROM, so it'll give you cheats at the start anyway, regardless of not having a cheat menu. Oh yeah, it does have a cheat menu, that's alright, but you have to put that input separately, and I'm not quite sure how to do that, but there'll be guides somewhere. So you get four different types of controllers in this to uh, to map yourself, uh, but I've only got a Wii remote, so if I say I wanted to change A to A, press any button on the Wii remote, and that would change it, but I don't want to do that, so I'm going to remap it to B. Uh, you, can, you can also choose to remap four different controllers, I think I just said that, but the SNES controller, the Super the Super Scope, the SNES mouse, and the Justifier. So I guess that, you know, yeah, left and right button and you'd use your Wiimote as the uh, the cursor. So that's that's really good. I'm really impressed with how they've implemented that in there. Uh, rendering again, progressive, uh, no, it'll just be filtered unfiltered apparently, so. Yeah, but this is a lot easier to save states. So this is uh, the in-game saves. Uh, if you haven't got it to automatically save the SRAM. And this is a snapshot, which is also known as a save state in this one. So just like with the Genesis, if you make a mistake, you can go back and redo it. But that's everything there is to know about the emulators. They're basically all the same from there. And you can emulate anything from from sort of Atari 2600 all the way up to PlayStation. But 
unfortunately, I don't think I have any PlayStation ROMs on this, or ISOs, I should call them, because they're disc images. Uh, definitely don't think I have any, but we will have a look, just in case. Uh, it'll be under Wii SX, which I don't have a folder for, so... Ah, this is where the USB folder is. So this is, that's where, um... That's where all of the files are stored for your, um... USB loader, like all your covers and stuff, but I couldn't see that on my computer for some reason, so I was really confused about where they were getting that information from. Uh, this is a backup disk loader, unfortunately on the Wii U that won't work because uh, the Wii U uses a different type of disk drive which doesn't read DVDs, oh, which is a bit sad really. Uh, code downloader for use with USB loaders, uh, this is a cheating device, device for your Wii U basically, you download a code, in the USB menu you could... Um, load that code and that would patch a little bit of the game for you and I'm not sure whether or not you can turn them on and off but uh, there should be a way I'm sure there will be so this is a N64 emulator which is laid out the same way as the PS1 emulator and uh, the reason for that is that the same people made it and I think there's a, a swirling M in the corner there because it's Mugen which was uh, the computer version of the emulator. So, I mean, I'm not going to load Majora's Mask. It takes too long to get through the intro. In fact, okay, then I will do. And because the games are uh, pretty hefty on RAM, they have to load some of it into the uh, into the Wii's memory. So as you can see, it actually does run at full speed. Near enough full speed, anyway. It's, it's good enough for me. Uh, I'm not going to bore you by carrying on that. So we'll quit back to the uh, loader. That you can do everything in this one that you can do in the other ones. It's just laid out a little bit differently. So, moving on, uh, the homebrew browser. Now, last time, oops, that's the wrong one. Last time I tried this, it would not connect to the internet. It did upload, it, it updated my homebrew browser, but it wouldn't connect me to the internet. So I'm, I'm gonna give this a try. But whether it works or not depends, because I'm sat quite a way away with this Wii to the. Uh, to the router or router, whatever you want to call that. I don't know how people pronounce it because Americans and English people will be watching this, so. Yeah, this app is basically an app that downloads apps to your Wii U, or to your SD card, I should say. So anything, there's a big database online and this app searches that database for all the games and things, compiles them into a list so that you can uh, download them really easily and really efficiently. Uh, click on the app that you want to download uh, Once it's downloaded it automatically puts the files where they need to be and that's it basically uh, It it just cuts out all the messing around with putting the SD card in the computer and things like that So uh, it's probably worth taking a look at Unfortunately, like I said, it's not working because I'm not sat close enough to my Wii uh, to my router router I'll call it a router because uh, that's sort of in between both so screw that, press the home button and return to the homebrew browser. But if we could, then the games would just show up straight away in here. Uh, we've also got these um, installers, which are just, uh, these are for virtual console games or iOS that you want to install, like system files. Unf but do not mess with the system files on a Wii U because you will end up breaking your Wii and you won't be able to use it. So you can choose which iOS to use, but Obviously only ones with the Trutcher bug uh, originally found will work and because the Wii U is updated beyond that we don't have any unless you've got CIOS installed which are these three iOS 249, 250 and 251. You can uh, use emulated NAND, so a NAND that's saved on your SD card and that just basically protects you from fucking up your actual Wii so you know it's probably worth installing it on a, a virtual NAND first but I don't have one so I can't show that. Uh, source devices, you've got, you can pick from anything, uh, SD card slot, and the only channel I've actually got to install here is the uh, the homebrew channel, and this was the homebrew channel I used to install because uh, the the homebrew channel wasn't in 16x9, and this one is, so I installed that one instead. Uh, okay, I'm going to go back to the homebrew channel again. So. Uh, that application basically if you have any uh, virtual console wads like uh, my life as a king dot wad say from the virtual console if you had that in the wad folder or anywhere located on your SD card you could go to that application 
load it up and just install it using the uh, the custom iOS and then that would appear on your home menu. I don't have any virtual console games so and I don't know whether that works on the Wii U so don't risk it just read up about it first. Uh, we've even got a multiple arcade machine emulator. Uh, very handy. I've actually got an arcade machine in my room. There's a video on YouTube in the same f uh, playlist as this one, so you might want to check that out. Uh, a media player, but no songs are on this uh, SD card, so there's no point in me showing you that either. It's self-explanatory anyway if you download that. So, And then you get these homebrew games. And uh, like Duck Hunt is the original fucking NES game. Absolutely love it. Uh, so that one I can actually play because it only requires one hand. Hey, hey. But yeah, uh, you can choose original, whatever you want to choose. So, basically where you point on the screen, that's obviously where your cursor is, where the light gun would normally see. And you press B to shoot as if it was a, a real gun. And the ducks get exceptionally fast on this as well, so I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this with one hand. I'd usually steady the remote with a second hand, but... Nope. Oh, it's a flyaway. Screw it. I give up. So yeah, that's pretty much everything there is to do with uh, the Homebrew channel. There are many, many apps located on webrew.org. Uh, so, you know, just browse that. If you see something you like, download it. Put it on your SD card and play away. Uh, if you have any other questions, just mention that in the comments section and I'll, uh, I'll do my best to sort of help you out with that, okay? Uh, this has been Mikey Taylor Gaming and good luck with your homebrew experience. If you enjoyed the video guys make sure to check out my let's play of Super Mario 3D World and make sure you check out djths.com's channel because his music is absolutely insane. Thanks very much, see you later.